What are the first three things an agent should do to be successful in a new real estate business? We'll get into it. Hey folks, Todd Tremonti here with another residential real estate agent video for you. And today we're answering the question, what are the first three things a new agent should do? Now, stay with me here because these are probably not going to sound like most of what you've been told where it may be, get this tool, get this resource, do this thing. There, there's plenty of that to do and some of it is good and some of it is bad, but I want to talk about the first three things you need to do before you go spend a ton of money, before you invest a tremendous amount of time. The failure rate in our business is extraordinarily high, somewhere around 80% in the first two years. I've heard as high as 92%, but let's just suffice it to say at least eight out of 10 people fail in their first two years. And of the two that are remaining, the two out of 10 that are remaining, statistically, at least one, if not more than one, which I know sounds crazy, um, are not full-time, full-focused, actually trying to make a career out of it. So very, 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 very few people jump into real estate and quickly make a successful career out of it. So let me give you three things that I believe you should do first before you go out and sell anything or begin to spend any money or a real significant amount of time. Number one is I want you to assess your own, and that's difficult, assess your own natural, what I would call God-given gifts and abilities and weaknesses, right? So you might do something as simple as a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I would say that strengths and weaknesses are internal. Those are personal to you. What are your strengths and weaknesses? Then your opportunities and threats are external, in the marketplace, in your community, that sort of thing. Focus mostly here on strengths and weaknesses, your personal gifts and abilities, right? Are you a people person? Are you highly analytical? Are you unbelievably hardworking? Are you super tech savvy? You know, are you really, really well connected in the community? Things like that, right? So that's what you want to establish because that's going to determine the second thing you should do. Now I'm going to circle back and we'll go into more detail on these. But the second thing you should do is based on what you discern, what you figure out, what you learn, what you clarify from assessing your personal gifts and abilities and weaknesses and faults, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, then you need to choose what type of business you want to build. That's right. Choose what type of business you want to build. The answer is not a real estate business. That is really not a type of business. That's an industry to be in. Residential real estate, probably. Right? That is not a type. Within residential real estate, there are prospecting-based businesses. And then within prospecting, there's 30 or 40 ways you could prospect. Expireds for sale by owners, internet leads, open houses, that kind of thing. There are relationship-driven, referral-driven businesses. And within that, there are influencer-type businesses where your referral sources are all industry people who could refer volumes of business. Or there's kind of a mom-and-pop neighborhood referral business where it's your friends, your neighbors, your family. And there's a bunch of variances within there. There are... Uh, marketing-based businesses where you're going to most likely spend money sending mail, doing television, radio, pay-per-click, Facebook, social media, internet type advertising, maybe newspapers, you know, does, those are still uh, real, uh, magazines, things like that. And then there's a bunch of other ones. But first, back to step one, you need to assess your personal strengths, weaknesses, gifts, and abilities. Because that will tell you what type of business you probably should run. A type that is consistent, that leans on, that depends on your natural giftedness. I am not naturally a super technical, hyper detailed person. So it really wouldn't be wise of me to run a business that is uber dependent on a skill set like that. Now, as my business has grown and I've been able to hire some staff, I hire people who have gifts that I don't have so we can contribute to each other. So our business does now depend on some of that type of behavior. It's just not me doing it because I'm not very good at it, right? Uh, I had the most success early on with the hyper relational level of business building. And then I transitioned when I had the funds into a marketing based business because that's how my brain works. So you need to think about that for yourself. What are those natural abilities that, that, again, as I would say, God has given you? 
And then what type of business makes sense for that? Now, I talked about lead generation types of businesses. You know, is it referral? Is it paid marketing? Is it prospecting? But you also want to think about a type of business from the perspective of, are you an individual agent? Are you a team? Are you a brokerage? Are you an agent with staff help? Are you an agent with licensed help? And there's a million other variations in between. Truly, 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 there are. There's not a one size that fits all. And then the third thing that I believe you really need to do in, in the beginning of your real estate career is once and only after you've established, number one and number two, your gifts and abilities, your weaknesses, and the type of business you want to build, you are building a business. You're starting to build a business. There's going to be an, a truly disproportionate amount of effort that goes in to the results early on. Even if the results are great, they'll get better later, probably with less effort. <clears throat> That's how starting a real business goes. Jumping into real estate doesn't just mean you run out and sell stuff. You're starting a business. So step one, figure that stuff, figure out your gifts, abilities, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Number two, what type of business is the right fit for you? What size, who's involved, where's your lead gen, how many hours do you work, all those things. Then the third thing and only at that point that you're gonna do is, drum roll, go out and make a mess. And I mean that. Try a lot of stuff, right? Let's say that you wanna be a prospecting based business. You wanna be on the phone two to four hours a day and in the beginning, much more calling, texting, emailing, reaching out to people about whether they need to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. If that's the case, then you could test out calling expired sellers, calling for sale by owner sellers, calling neighborhoods, door knocking. Um, you could test out um, open houses, client events, buyer seminars, whatever that looks like. There's a million other ways to prospect too, by the way. Uh, your sphere of influence, your friends, your family, your neighbors, your past coworkers, all those things. But, um, you know, if it's open houses, you might try luxury open houses, typical open houses, big open house events, weekday open houses, evening open houses, long ones, short ones, and ones that you do by yourself, some that you do with the lender or other agents, your own listings, other people's listings. There's a lot of ways to go out and try a bunch of stuff, fail at some things, succeed at some things, and make a mess. You know, when we come back in year two, that's when we start to narrow that down. This worked, this didn't work, I'm good at that. This worked, but I didn't like it. This worked and I did like it. And we can start to narrow our focus towards the bullseye of what your business will be as it matures. But as an example, this might look like, you know, step one, what are your strengths and weaknesses? They mo those might be your natural gifts and abilities. It also might be based on what you've done in the past. I had this type of job and I learned this type of skill. And even though I may be new to real estate, I can very ethically and honestly talk about how I'm not new to advocating on behalf of my clients because in this past role, I did this, which protected my clients. I'm not new to negotiation because in past roles, I did this. I'm not new to marketing because in past roles, I did this. Uh, I might have a degree that seems totally irrelevant to this, but what is it about that degree that I could pull out and say I learned to be highly analytical or highly process oriented or client focused or aware of the marketplace or whatever it is from that? I could find value in every single thing. Then again, choose the right kind of business that fits with that and then go out and try a ton of stuff. Now, don't throw money at everything. Again, in year one, that's step three to make a mess is mostly time and effort and energy. You're not gonna throw a ton of money. Now, if you have a great budget to start with, then you may do that strategically, but you're gonna be really inefficient with those dollars most likely in that first year, and that's okay. That's what starting a business looks like, figuring things out. Now, I'm not going to add a step four, but if I was, I would simply say something along the lines of get some help from a mentor, a great broker, a team leader, a friend, maybe a coach, Chances are in your very beginning of your first year, that's probably not where you wanna spend that money quite yet. But if you can afford it, a coach, a, a really great mentor or someone like that uh, can make or break someone's uh, career and really help you succeed earlier, succeed at all, uh, and be more profitable and enjoyable early on. So those are the first three things and a little kind of thrown in, maybe sort of fourth, depending on where you are, on how to get going in a real estate career. I feel extraordinarily confident that if you would follow that list of instructions, you could do really, really, really well 
Obviously, we do some coaching and consulting. If we could help you, we'd love to do that. We'd be happy to do that if we have space at the time. You can find us online at alistingaweek.com, alistingaweek.com, where there's tons of information about how to add a listing a week to your business or a buyer a week to your business. We have a really cool incubator event where we teach both of those as well as a course about don't go it alone, not having to do it all by yourself. You can find information about all of that online at realestategrowthsystems.com. realestategrowthsystems.com. Comment below. We read every single one as long as it's appropriate. We'll respond to you there or maybe we'll shoot another video for you. We'd love to connect with you at some point down the road, see how we can help you in your business and if there might make sense for us to work together. So take care. Hope this was valuable for you. I know it will be if you'll implement it and I will talk to you on the next one. Take care.